Hey friends, Pastor Buddy Chapman from Keep the Promise Ministries here on our midweek message, uh, Wednesday, January the 25th. I hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, just getting underway. I uh, got a few things I want to share tonight. Won't hold you long. Uh, I thought while people are getting ready to come on in, we could go ahead and open up with some prayer. Can't ever go wrong going to God. Lord, I thank you for today, and I thank you for each one that will be listening, whether it's now or a little bit later or even a week from now. Your word never comes back void. I ask you to just uh, take this time to just draw us close to you and encourage one another in the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> well, I hope you guys are having a good week, like I said. I started out with a thought for today when I first woke up. God tried to try to just uh, put a little something in my heart. I was always seeking him you know, through the night, and I said, Lord, what are we going to talk about tomorrow. What is, what's going on? And I want to read what I posted. A lot of you guys uh, responded to that on my Facebook post. It was about, men like 145 folks. I said, well, let's preach on that tonight. Let's talk about that. Evidently, that's, you know, something God wants to share with us. So I wrote this morning when I rolled over um, after praying a little bit, I said, there's things in our life that only God can fix. Do you believe that? I sure do. I said, so let's get out of the way and let him do his perfect work. And I said, less of me, Lord, and more of you. Now, when I say less of me and more of the Lord, that doesn't mean that we just lose out and, and we're not even a part of what's going on. It's that we're submitting our lives to the Lord so that God is in control, that God's working through us so that we can be the best at whatever we do. And the Lord drew, drew, um, just kind of pulled me to this scripture I wanted to share with you. It's in Philippians 1, 6, and it says, um, being confident of this, all right? That he who began a good work, that's God, in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. God's doing a work in our life. If we're uh, believers in the Lord, God is working in us. His spirit is in us. And he's always trying to draw us closer to him. It's always about growing in that relationship. And I think what we don't realize is that, you know, a lot of times when I talk to people, they talk about religion. Well, I'm not here to talk about religion. I'm talking about a relationship, a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you say, what's the difference? And I say everything. It's personal. It's not about what your grandmother believes. It's not about what your mom believes. It's not about what anybody else believes. It's about you coming to the saving knowledge of who God says we are and who he says he is from his word. So I pray that, you know, as, as we do these messages, that you're always thinking about it as a relationship. So thinking about us getting out of the way and, and letting God lead and going back to thinking about there's things that only God can fix. I thought about many times when I talk to people about coming to Christ or, or having a relationship with Christ, they think about it's a lot of rules, it's a lot of do's and don'ts and what I got to stop doing and, and what I can't go and all these things. And I almost, they almost picture it as they're being shackled with a, a big stop sign. You know, I got to stop this, I got to stop that. And it's nothing like that whatsoever. What it is is that we yield our life to the things of God so that God can give us the best life we can have. I don't think anybody would probably argue, maybe a few, uh, everybody's got their own opinions, but can I do more on my own or can I do more being in the will of God? I think going with the will of God is always going to be the best. So how do we know the will of God? We know the will of God from the word of God. See, Satan doesn't mind what you're doing most of the time as long as you're not in God's word. He wants to keep that book shut. You know, I visit a lot of people from time to time, and, and it's it's kind of funny, uh, but it's actually kind of sad. You go by, and they have the, the big old Bible. I mean, that big old Bible that's sitting on a coffee table that nobody ever opens. And it's kind of sad because there's so many promises in the Word of God. There's so many things in the Word of God. Life-changing. There's life in the Word of God. So we want to keep that book open. We want to be reading God's Word. And so today, I know a lot of times when we're in relationships— we try to change other people. Well, I've been here for 52 years, and I don't think I've changed much of anybody. I can encourage. I can pray. Uh, I can love on people. And through those actions, I pray that God takes that and blesses that and draws them closer to him. Because that's ultimately what we want. We want them to know Jesus Christ. We want them to have that personal relationship so that they know when they take their last breath here, they take their first breath in eternity with God in heaven. I was thinking about a story. I always got a story. Anybody knows me has always got a story. And I, I believe stories really teach so much. Jesus was the great master storyteller, the, you know, throughout the time that, that he could give us a word picture so that we could kind of really wrap around us. And, and this is really about seeking our Heavenly Father and, and his wisdom. 
I remember when my youngest son was probably about three or four years old, we had came back and we had did a little shopping and we had got these real cool little yard toys, you know, when they're little, they're little plastic, like a little plastic rake, a little plastic, a plastic shovel, a little plastic this and that. And he, all he wanted to do was play with them. He's just like, man, let me have it, dad, let me have it. And, and I was trying to tell him the way they were put together, they were all, they were all tied together. So they were very cumbersome. They were very heavy. But he, he was snatching them from me. And something told me, just, just let him have it. And so here you go, Jess, have it. And he began to play with those. And instead of playing one at a time, he had all three wrapped together. And they began to tire him out and wear him out. And he realized, man, maybe that's not the best thing. And I said, come over here and let your dad, you know, help you out. And so I broke those things down and laid them out where he can he could easily do these things. You know, we do the same thing with God. No, let me have it. Let me have it. I got it. Let me drive. And we find out, man, if I'd have just let God work through me and work in me, it might be a whole different deal. You know, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing that a lot of times that we start out and we're going to do it our way. And where we really should be seeking the Lord and, and asking him for his wisdom and guidance. And that's why I say what I say. There's things in our life that only God can fix. You know, he can only fix the sin in our life. We cannot clean up enough to fix the sin. He can only show us that this is the way that you love your wife. This is the way you love your husband. This is the way you treat other folks. So I pray, you know, as we get together that we hear these me this message with our heart. I say that about every time. So that we can grow in the things of God. <clears throat> because that's God's best. To know what God has for you. And to realize that God wants the best for you. Now, I want to share something tonight. I, I try to think of something different each time we get together. And one of the things I like to do in sharing my faith is this. Now, you know, usually when you pull out money, you can get most people's attention. And so a lot of times when I get change or something, and I go through a drive through or whatever, I'll say, hey, uh, take a look at this. What do you see? And usually they say, one. I said, what's on the back? They say, one. And I said, well, look real close. And it says, you know, in God we trust. I said, yeah. So that opens up the door for me to share a little bit. And I said, let me ask you a question. I said, if you die tonight, do you think you go to heaven or hell? Most of the time, people would say, oh, I'd probably go to heaven. I think I'll go to heaven. And I go, well, why would you go to heaven? And usually people say, if they're, if they're not informed, well, I'm a pretty nice guy. I said, really, are you a nice guy? I said, yeah, I believe that, you know. I said, can I ask you a couple of questions to see if that's true? See, the Bible says in Psalm uh, 19, 7, that the law of the Lord is perfect in converting the soul. So I point him back to the Ten Commandments. Not because we, can, we can't live up to them. It shows us that we need a Savior. So I said, so you're a pretty nice guy? And he goes, yeah. I said, well, let me ask you a couple of questions to see if that's true. I said, well, look, hey, have you ever lied before? And they go, yeah. And I said, well, lying is a sin. And they go, man, buddy, you're ripping that dollar. I go, yeah, because sin tears us away from the things of God. I said, have you ever taken anything, even as a kid? You know, they said, well, yeah, I, I took some candy or something. That's a long time ago. And what I tell them, I said, well, time doesn't forgive sin. We need Christ. Then I might ask if it's a guy, I said, have you ever looked at a woman with lust? And I go, yeah. And I go, I understand because you just told me you lied and you told me that. So I, I got I to gotta go with that. So I go over here and I said, you know what I used to think? I thought the same thing as you. I thought I would go over here and do more, uh, give more, help more. And then on the day that I stand before the Lord, that you know what? That he would turn around and say, well, buddy, you know, you're not too bad. I could let you slide. But that's not the case at all. If we went before a judge now and he let you slide, would he be a good judge or a bad judge? He wouldn't be a good judge. God is a perfect judge, but the good news is coming. So I said, well, look, man, by your own admission, this is what's going on in our life. You said you're a lying, thief, and adulteress at heart. And what I found out when I, I try to do stuff to get to heaven, that my works are like filthy rags. I said, so check this out. We have a great chasm, a great chasm between us and God because our sin separates us from God. Does that concern you? And they go, wow, that does concern me. Then they're ready for the good news. The good news is, is that Jesus Christ came and paid our sin debt in full. A price that we couldn't pay, he did it because of his love for us. So check this out. I said, you know what the Bible says? That Jesus came and lived a life that was sinless so that 
when he laid his life down for us, it was a perfect sacrifice. And when we call on his name, the Bible says this. It says, if you call upon the name of the Lord, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So when we do that, he wraps his loving arms around us because he's a restoring God. Amen. We like restoration. God puts us all back together again. And the Bible says, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Check this out. And I shared the good news. I said, that's what Christ has done for you. And when you ask him in your life, he wants to restore you just like this. And they go, wow, man, that's so cool. And I said, you know, that's just a little illustration to kind of get your mind thinking about all that God's done for you. If you really want to be blown away, think about the real sacrifice that God gave for you. That takes away the sin of the world. But here's the thing. We've got to put our faith and trust in that. And so, you know what, friends? Don't worry about cleaning up. Don't worry about uh, doing this or doing that. I tell you what, what we need to do is be looking up. Because when we call on the name of Jesus, he says, you know what? When you put your faith and trust in me, I will restore you. And so I hope tonight's message is that we understand that only restoration comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. We can encourage, we can love, but nobody can do the work in somebody's heart unless they know Jesus Christ. Friends, I hope that's an encouraging midweek message. I ask you all the time, you know what? I'm asking you, be a part of what's going on here. Hit the share button. It's simple and it can change somebody's life. I hope you guys enjoyed the message tonight. I always want to invite you out to our home church. It's at uh, Nine Cedar Road in Pocosa, Virginia, 23662. And that's every Sunday at 10 a.m. Come as you are. I tell you what, we are some just laid back folks that love the Lord. We enjoy what God's doing and we'd love to have you with us. Also, I want to direct you to our website, www.keepthepromise.org. Please pass this on. Pray for our ministry. We're going to be praying for you. We love you. Have a great night, and I hope you guys were blessed. Amen.